Greetings automotive enthusiasts. I'm on the road again. Uh, another Tales from the Trip. Um, this one's uh, kind of interesting. So uh, what we're doing is we're actually delivering a car up to Hayes uh, to a customer. But uh, so what I've been looking for is trying to find something up in that area to buy. So that way, you know, I don't have an empty uh, uh, trailer on the way back. So I did find something actually very rare. Becky found it actually. Uh, and her, she searches for cars as much as me, if not more. Uh, so she found a very rare, cool old Mercedes. And uh, so we're going to drop off the Fiat uh, and then pick up this Mercedes. Uh, and I'm not sure what status or what state or what to do with the car, but you know, when you find some of these old cars, you just gotta buy them. And then my advantage with having a salvage yard is if it's if it's beyond repair, then, then uh, we have uh, a way to um, utilize it for parts. So, uh, so that's where we're headed. So headed to the shop now and uh, pick up the Fiat and then blast north to Hayes. All right, we got the Fiat 500E loaded up. Man, I'm gonna have to find another one of these because we actually really love these cars. We kept this one at the house and just drove it. But anyway, got it loaded up. Gonna jump in the Audi and head to Hayes. All right, we are on the road. Just got done fueling up. Uh, had David uh, pump up the tires there on the trailer. Uh, on, when you're hauling a, a trailer, you know, you always, it's not like you're, you don't do this on your car, but on trailer tires, you always go to max PSI on their tire, what it's rated at. And on these, they're about 65 pounds. So uh, when I was coming back from uh, St. Louis, or Indianapolis, I'm sorry, uh, from delivering the Opal, I dropped them all down to about 35 pounds um because the trailer was empty and uh, it's a kind of a trick that you can do to keep the uh trailer from bouncing around really bad especially little trailers since it's so lightweight so drop it down to about 35 pounds but don't forget you gotta put air back in them you know you could uh i mean with 35 pounds you could still haul and tow something um you know but it just wouldn't be ideal so uh but you know emergency it's like you can still load something and tow it but Headed up to Hayes, you can see the little Fiat right there in the back window, has got such a happy little face. This is the second one we've had, and I guess I'm just gonna have to buy one of these and not put it on the website, because every time we put it on the website, we seem to sell them pretty fast, so they only, they only sold them in California and Oregon, so looks like I'm gonna have to uh, search out uh, some in that area and uh, maybe ship a couple in, maybe one to sell and one to keep. They're just fantastic little cars, I love them, I love them. So, all right, well, we just got a couple hours of driving to do, and then we'll be delivering the Fiat and picking up this uh, rare Mercedes. Stay tuned. Uh-oh, I just had a massive vibration coming from the trailer, jerking me like this, like crazy. Uh, luckily, I got a decent, perfect timing here. I got a shoulder to pull off on, but uh-oh. I think I got a tire that just busted a cord or something. Let me go check. Dang it. Try not to get ran over here. What is going on? Oh, I hear something. You hear that? Oh, oh. This one right here. Yeah, this tire right here. See how that tire's flat? Look at that tire all bulged out right there. Oh boy. Oh. seem nice and tight the other thing about having 65 in them as you can tell yeah, that guy's low that guy's tight all right here we go 
Ricky Bobby, time to change some tires. And I got my trusty <laughs> wheel ramp and tire right here. Is that cool or what? <laughs> Don't have to mess with jacks. Yeah, definitely this tire. Woo, look at that. Ooh. Broken cord. There it is, changed and done in less than 10 minutes. Back on the road. I just stuck the spare inside the vehicle to save time, so hopefully I don't have another flat. <laughs> well, you always gotta be prepared for stuff because uh, stuff happens. So um, I'm back on the road. It's actually interesting because I, you know, I don't know, four or six months ago, I had all the trailer tires balanced. And, uh, you know, because when it was no, no, no way to, you know, I could feel that the tires are out of balance. And then, uh, but I was noticing that I was having a balance issue again. And I was like, well, that's odd. You know, I'm like, I had the tires balanced. Well, what it was, was it was that tire was, uh, was coming apart. <laughs> so uh, I was getting ready to go. That was my next thing to do is go back in and uh, check on the tires and have them rebalanced and have them checked. So I'm glad to have the spare and David uh, got it aired all the way up and uh, I'm back on the road so <laughs> always gotta have contingency you gotta make sure you got your spare and jack and, and tire iron because you're always gonna have a problem when you, when you least expect it so all good go get a new tire replaced on the on the spare and, uh, and then put it back on the trailer and, uh, and then uh, check all the tires because the tires really aren't that old but you know, if that tire maybe got ran low, maybe it had a slow leak in it, and then it got used, uh, that's what happens, is a tire gets low, and then it gets overheated, the metal cords in it, and then boom, just like you take a piece of wire, you bend it, bend it, and it gets hot, and then it breaks, it's exactly what your tire uh, metal cords do, and that's why you gotta keep that tire pumped up, and to keep it from flexing as, as much as possible, because that, you know, every, every time that that tire, you know, hits the ground, you know, it, it flexes like this every time it rolls, and uh, and that creates heat, and that is not your friend. <laughs> so, little tow truck tire tip. <laughs> Hope I don't have another blowout or I am in trouble. All right, we have arrived at our destination, and a cool story about this customer is he's a repeat customer, and uh, this gentleman uh, actually bought a car from us uh, when the pandemic um, hit. And he was one of the first cars we sold when the pandemic hit. So, and uh, it was kind of like, we were all freaking out, kind of wondering what was gonna happen if we were gonna sell any cars. And uh, so, and he still has the car. So, well, we're gonna go ahead and pull into this gentleman's driveway and drop off his little Fiat. All right, we've made it, and this is Vincent. Vincent, how you doing, sir? Great, man. How you doing? Hey, good. And I see a car in the garage. It <laughs> yeah. looks familiar, huh? Oh yeah. Yep, that's yeah. that Challenger you bought from me back yep. in the pandemic days, right? Yeah. I is. think you were one of the first ones. I remember I was panicking, you know, because the pandemic hit, and uh, and I was like, I, you know, what's gonna, you know, am I gonna just be not selling a car here for like a year, <laughs> you know? And then it was crazy because I had all kinds of cool cars and yeah. and that car, and then. And then all of a sudden we started selling everything, you know, and I think we ended up, we had like, went from 30 cars to like three cars. Yeah, if it wasn't for the pandemic, I wouldn't have bought that. Yeah, so that's, right. Because browsing on the internet, I was That's bored. right. You told so me I you were bored. Yeah, you know, everybody's at home. Yeah. And uh, so a car was basically your own personal little uh, adventure to get out, right? right. Yeah, so exactly. people started buying, because I had all kinds of fun cars, like convertibles and all kinds of stuff. And I thought, oh man. You know, and I dropped all my prices, you know, yeah, and, uh, and but a little having no idea that like everything was going to go up and all that stuff. So I don't know how much money I lost, you know, <laughs> but you don't know the future, right? Yeah. Everybody's kind of panicking. But yeah, that was funny. You're telling me, yeah, I was, uh, <laughs> it got bored. Yeah. Well, what do you think about this little Fiat? Yeah, it's cool. Well, my wife loves this thing. She thought, well, yeah, like I said, what do you mark it for another car? We just saw that thing. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah gotta have it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's funny i had one i had a white one with the orange kind of the reverse of this and uh 
we drove it around for a week or so and I listed it and we sold it like the first day we listed it. And we're like, dang, and then we always looking for another one and they're not easy to find because they only made them for California and Oregon. Right. You know what I mean? As they call it a compliance car. And uh, so we bought this one and then we listed that. And then sure enough, here comes Vincent <laughs> saying, hey, you know, and of course you're a repeat customer, so I got to take right. care of you. So we actually brought it up here to you in Hayes. And, uh, and yeah, so now I got to go on the hunt. And I guess I got to search in California and Oregon. And I think I'm going to buy two next time. And I'll put one on the website and I'll put one in the garage. <laughs> yeah, they seem to be. I mean, I've been looking around, so they're not around here. So you brought them no. back, you know? Oh, sure got a nice place here, Vincent. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, how long you been here? 22 years. 22 years. This is Pennsylvania. Oh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. I was detecting a little accent there. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't sound like a native Kansan. Yeah. Well, let's Why get this I'll little Fiat off the trailer and so we can get you on the road, sir. All right, the wife is super happy. There they go. <laughs> she stepped on it. <laughs> oh, it's so much fun to meet these people. And I know we ship so many cars, but it's unfortunate because there's so many people that I don't get a chance to meet. But Hayes was only a couple hours away and I had two birds with one stone, so it worked out. Well, here they come. <laughs> He's on just silent drive. Pretty cool little car. <laughs> I like the way she punched it when she took oh, off. Oh man, you got a speed demon. <laughs> That's hilarious. That little thing, huh? This car is faster than my brand new Lexus. Isn't that crazy? Yes. When you hit the gas on that thing, it just goes, doesn't it? Yes, I love it. <laughs> so you happy? I'm happy. Oh good, good. Well, we're so happy. We appreciate your guys' business. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. I no, love it. If you need anything, you know where we're at. And there's the Challenger. Man, that still looks good. <laughs> yeah. I see. I like the way you got it parked in there backwards, you know. Yeah, yeah so she can get out. I get out <laughs> well, we appreciate you folks. Enjoy, okay? Thank, Thank you, you so much. Great service. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that was so much fun and such nice people. It just, it's, it's so wonderful, you know. I mean, we're so blessed with so many nice customers. And, uh, you know, and we always just try to do our best. I mean, we're not perfect, but we try. Uh, so on to the next car. Uh, it's here in Hayes. I just got to punch in the address to the GPS and uh, pick up this Mercedes. Let's go check it out. Uh-oh. Might have to stop back and check on this one. <laughs> that is a clean little CRX. You must be Phil, huh? I'm Phil. <laughs> How you doing, Phil? And this must be the old Mercedes, That's huh? It. That's nice it. to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. Oh, my goodness. 80, what year is it? I didn't even ask you. Uh, 83. 83, okay. Yeah, so they made these, I think, from probably about 80... See, this is a Euro car, you know, European spec car. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, in the U.S., I mean, this, you know, they never brought the 500 to the United States. Oh, really? Only the 380, yeah. Oh. So basically, it was the 450 SL from 73 to 80. That was the V8, uh -huh. the, all, or the iron V8. Uh -huh. And then in 81 to 85, they had the 380 SL, uh -huh. which was a small 3.8 liter. And everybody, nobody was happy with it because they didn't have any power. You know what I mean? It only had like 180, yeah. 180, 185 horsepower. So what people did was they shipped in the gray market version, the 500, which is a hot rod. This thing is about 230 I horsepower. Know. I looked yeah. it up and it has Elisha's torque. Yes, yeah. They were really fast cars. So, But unfortunately, this one looks like it's had some better days, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right there. I just... <laughs> there go. Yeah, there it's tricky. Yeah, it's right in this side. Yeah, right, in right, there. right there. there. Right there. But yeah, that's There's the problem. A new battery. Okay, new battery. I think it's charged up too. He just oh, okay. To yeah, I just disconnected off. it or whatever. But yeah, that's an all aluminum 500. What's interesting is I actually personally have had it for 30 years, an 82 European 500 SE, which is the sedan. Uh -huh. So I actually have this uh, this engine in a sedan that I've had for. 30 years actually. <laughs> What's that? Uh, yeah, I'll look back around there, but just kind of checking her out. 500. And then, one, the way you know a 500, you see one going down the road, see the spoiler? Uh -huh. That's factory. Really? Yes, that's factory. And only the 500 had it. Because of the top speed that it was capable of, they were afraid because this car probably do 150 miles an hour. Yeah. And uh, so that is actually factory, uh -huh. believe it or not. So kind of interesting there. 
A little broken tail light. Yeah, it's yeah, one of those. That things. tire on that side still has some nibs on the outside. Oh, does it? Okay. Tires don't, so it oh. must be a newer one. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, it's one of those things where you know you were kind of looking for some parts, but yeah. but to be honest with you, you know the what it would cost to really get this car going right. would. Uh, I think you're. I think you're making a wise decision punting oh. it. <laughs> Longer. Miles are good. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So I just I said, well, now something has to go. <laughs> and plus, I couldn't find no mechanics right here that no. knew anything about it. You know? Right, but I mean, you can see that you know there's some repair in oh, here. Yeah. Uh, you know, so yeah, yeah I wouldn't. Uh, yeah. You'd be better off going and buying a nice one. You'd end up having more money in this one than what it's worth, well, and you'd still a buddy, have a needy I have car. A buddy that has, I think his is an '86 or something like that. Uh huh. And uh, he uh, he just told me he'd uh, sell to me for about forty five hundred. Oh time. wow, yeah. an '86. Yeah. Well, if it's an '86, then it looks exactly like this. Right, they do. So an '86, it would be a five sixty SL. Really? Which are really valuable. They made those from from eighty six to eighty nine, mm -hmm. and that had a five point six liter V eight in it and about two hundred and fifty horsepower. Holy yeah, God. so those cars, those are the ones that are really worth the money. So like the very early versions, and then the last version, which is kind of typical. Right. You know, mm -hmm. the stuff in the middle is not so as as much, but right. still, any clean SL is right. going to be is going to be a nice car. But yeah, these are kind. Of, I got a friend that actually has his grandma bought this car brand new, mm -hmm. a European. 500 <laughs> really? yep wow. and he still has it to this day his grandma gave it to him so there's well title. there's the title and i uh, even signed it okay yep and that's all we need it. i know that's yeah. 83 500 to sell yeah. well this would be good because these are hard to find yeah Th this if this was a 450 or 380 or whatever you know i yeah. wouldn't be as interested because right. you know but the fact that it's a 500 makes it a little more unique uh -huh. and i have a bunch of these for parts oh. but um but i don't have this you know right. i have european cars with a six cylinder yeah. and i have american cars with v8 but i just don't have this configuration so i'm like you know it'd be good to add to the add to the collection yep. well go. i'll go ahead and get you paid and get it loaded up okay. thank you sir all right well we got them loaded up here no problem Actually, he couldn't find the key, so luckily, so I had to get my trailer really straight. <laughs> so, got the car on there straight, and uh, and it's a parts car. It's too bad because this is a really cool car back in its day, but uh, got an aftermarket spoiler on this here. What do we got? I don't know what kind of brand that is? Any brand on it? Nah, I don't see AMG on there. Probably just a AMG copy. But uh, still, though, get a 500 SL in the yard. There ain't very many of them out there. So, Hoovy, I got a parts car for you. <laughs> if you uh, need any parts for your grandma's 500 Euro SL. So it's nice to, to have one in stock. All right, we get back on the road and get home. Well, got the 500 loaded up, strapped down. And uh, Mr. Phil there, he sure was a nice guy. It was nice uh, chit chatting with him. And he, he was telling me that him and his buddy got uh, uh, drafted into Vietnam or whatever and they both made it back so that was nice uh, news to hear so thanks for your service Phil but uh, so I guess we'll try to there's not much out here between Hayes and home so it's about 6 30 so a little later than I had anticipated so probably try to find me a hamburger or something real quick and hit the road and call her a day we'll just drop this thing off at the shop and uh, bring it into the yard and uh, get it ready for part so I appreciate you guys riding along. Hit that notifications button with you, subscribe, and then hit that notifications button. That way you can kind of follow along on our adventures because you never know when we might have your next dream car. This one's a parts car, or you never know when we might have your next parts car. <laughs> Maybe you got this car and need some parts. So anyway, appreciate you riding along with us. Look us up, have a great day, and happy motoring.